Over the coming months, we'll be taking a look at what makes up a solid beef quality assurance program on your operation. One essential tactic is having a strong relationship with your veterinarian. NCBA's Beef Quality Assurance Team has more from Fort Collins, Colorado. Today we want to talk to you about the important role that the veterinarian plays in the Beef Quality Assurance Program that you develop for your individual farm or ranch. The cattle industry is founded on partnerships, partnerships with your neighbors, customers, suppliers. The role of the veterinarian cannot be overstated in importance. You and your veterinarian form an effective team that helps provide the technical expertise, the day-to-day -day management, and the overall planning and implementation of a plan and program that protects the health of your cattle, the sustainability of your business and your way of life, and equally important, the protection of the people who consume the foods we produce, the consumer. So we look forward to sharing with you a whole series of thoughts, concepts, and protocols that will help make you more effective in your relationship with your local veterinarian as you work to make America's beef industry the best in the world. I'm here today with Dr. John Moss, Extension Veterinarian from the University of California, Davis. He's also a cow-calf producer from Northern California. John, what do you expect of your clients? Brad, that's a great question, and with cow-calf producers nowadays, the thing we need is prevention, prevention, prevention. We need to have a healthy herd and we need to have healthy individual animals. So one of the main things I'm looking for is to sit down with my clients and develop a plan. And a plan uh, not only to prevent disease, but also in the event of individual animals that get sick, to treat them uh, quickly and effectively. And that plan is in the producer's hands so that he or she can go out and, and produce uh, uh, treat those individual animals uh, when they need it uh, according to best scientific and medical uh, principles. What should a producer uh, expect from you as a veterinarian? Well, they should uh, expect me to uh, understand their operation, which is going to spend a, I'm going to have to spend a little time there to get that done. And then they should expect for me to help them develop a plan that works for them in their setting based on all the problems that are in the, in the local area as well as in their individual herds. John, as a veterinarian, what are the records that you expect your clients to keep to help you do your job to the best of your ability? Well, Brad, that's a really good question. And, and you know, one of the most important things on a cow-calf operation is reproduction. If that cow doesn't have a calf and wean a calf every year, uh, we're losing uh, money and efficiency. So it's great to have a full set of reproductive uh, records. And that's things as simple as, did she calve? Uh, did the calf get sick? Did she wean a calf? What was the weight of the calf at weaning? Those kinds of things that are just basic that we all keep in our red book or somewhere else. Also, from a disease prevention standpoint, you can utilize the beef quality assurance forms that are in every manual in every state that says, well, we treated these calves, uh, vaccinated these calves uh, for these conditions. We dewormed them at this time. Uh, all the kinds of things that are done on a routine preventive measure, as well as the individual animals or groups that got treated. You know, we treated them for this disease or that disease, whether it's pink eye or scours or respiratory disease. And this is the way uh, they responded to those treatments that we'd laid out ahead of time. And those kinds of records help me, uh, number one, look at the reproductive efficiency uh, of the herd to make sure we don't have uh, problems with management, bad bulls, uh, venereal disease, other, other infectious diseases. And also, when we did have to treat the uh, occasional animal or the occasional group, we know how well those treatments worked and we can make some uh, changes uh, in, in the years to come, either make the treatments cheaper or make them more effective. Those kinds of things are very important and, and I need those records to, uh, to take a look at the uh, operation in any kind of detail. John, as a new client, how would you advise me to start a good herd health program? Well, one of the most important things, particularly with uh, new people coming into an area or uh, new people coming into the industry, is to kind of get an idea about where it is they're going to operate. 
Uh, as a veterinarian, I'm going to know a lot about the local area, the local disease problems. Uh, there may be a difference in, in diseases or uh, mineral deficiencies from one side of a, of a drainage to another. So I'd like to at least uh, be on the place a little bit and, and understand how you, how you want to operate and how you want to go forward. And then we need to develop a good preventive program. You know, we need to prevent the common infectious diseases, whether they're the viral diseases or the bacterial diseases. We need to prevent problems with parasitism. We need to prevent problems with uh, trace mineral deficiencies or excesses and those kinds of things. So uh, we may, may need a little bit of testing or certainly a knowledge of the local area. And then you and I need to sit down and develop a written plan on when you're going to vaccinate, what you're going to vaccinate with, when you're going to deworm, that not only makes sense from a medical standpoint, but makes sense for you as a producer in your operation. Uh, we can't have you out there in a snowstorm on January 1 just because we decided to vaccinate on January 1. We need to have a system that's going to work good for you and also meet all the medical criteria. So we need to have that kind of system and it needs to be written down and we need to evaluate it every year based on the information you give me uh, you know, on follow-up. I'm Ryan Rupert, Director of the National Beef Quality Assurance Program and today I'm with Dr. Dee Griffin from the University of Nebraska. Dee is a veterinarian and founding member of the BQA Advisory Board and today we're going to talk about how antibiotics play a key role in beef quality assurance. D, beef quality assurance was really founded on educating producers on the proper use of antibiotics. Can you tell us a little bit about the education uh, of antibiotics in BQA? Yes, I, <clears throat> beef quality assurance, as you mentioned, got its start over concern about the use of, 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 of antibiotics and, and subsequent residues. Um, and at the time we started, the residue rate in the United States was in beef cattle was a tick under 2%. Today that number is 0 .00, put four zeros in a number and you've got, the USDA says we're residue free. But we still have to pay close attention. The, the issue of proper selection of antibiotics is not a residue issue. It's a matter of getting the most of, 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 the, of the products that we buy. Uh, when I first started, uh, antibiotics uh, were not nearly as expensive as they are today. And we've had those discussions, I now in my 30 years, of looking at, at cultures and necropsies and laboratory results. Lots of things have changed in my mind from when I first got out of veterinary college. Uh, we use penicillin, oxytet, sulfa pills are real common, and they still are for some. I wouldn't have a bottle of penicillin or a box of sulfa pills in an operation if, if, if somebody put a gun to my head. We don't have time. Bacteria replicate about once an hour, and if you put the math to that, one bug that you don't properly address with a uh, proper selection and use of an antibiotic in 24 hours is 16 million. I mean, it, it's like the, the dead of the United States multiplying. You don't have time, because that one bug an animal can deal with it. A, a bug can deal with uh, a thousand bugs. But when you get to uh, 10,000 or 100,000 organisms, you've reached the infective dose for most of the diseases that our cattle are dealing with. I think I understood it. I just didn't appreciate it when I was younger. We're working with prey animals. You know, God has millions of years of genetics built in these animals to not look sick. If they look sick, they become shore lunch for some predator, a lion, a tiger, a wolf, or whatever continent you're on. So these animals have really, really good backgrounds in not looking sick. And so when some cowboy thinks they can go find one, you know, in a 30 second or 30 minute ride through a set of cattle, don't kid yourself. When we do spot one, we've got no time to waste. I really believe the new uh, modern technology antibiotics that we have available today, and we've got a bundle of them. We've never had it so good, but we need to start with antibiotics at work, and we need to have proper doses and used over proper timing. These antibiotics are, are governed by the U.S. government through FDA. Can you tell us a little bit more about the rules and the regulations that that follow this and why we need to have a veterinarian involved so that we have someone that really understands the law and how we should properly use these. Okay, uh, useful probably for not only drugs but their vaccines and otherwise. 
The USDA is in charge of all vaccines, and that's under the Code of Federal Regulations, Title IX. Code of Federal Regulations 21 is where all the FDA information, uh, reg, Code of Federal Regulations stay. In Title 40 is where the EPA's things. So our pesticides that we use to control ticks and external parasites, that kind of stuff would be EPA. Vaccines with USDA, the FDA, Title 21, is where the drugs rely. Uh, in 19, I'm gonna say 94, 96, we had faced this problem of not having the uh, flexibility to address the needs of the cattle. And, and, and Congress passed a, a revision of the Code of Federal Regulations referred to as AMDUCA, the uh, Animal Medicinal uh, Drug Use Clarification Act, which gave veterinarians the legal right under the Code of Federal Regulations to adjust the medications needed to address the animal health and well-being of, of, of sick animals. So if we need to adjust the dose of a medication to properly address the disease condition for which is not labeled on the, uh, on the bottle of, of medication, we can do that. But there's a caveat. I don't care how many degrees you've got or how legal it may be, the moment your use of medication winds up in the food chain, you've now adulterated food. And, and, and there are legal remedies for that, actually criminal liabilities for that. If, if a residue shows up in the market, uh, the first offense, if they believe, if when they investigate that you were being uh, malicious, careless, or cavalier with the way you use the medication, the first offense is $25,000 and a misdemeanor. The second offense is a felony with a quarter of a million. Uh, the federal government, speaking for the public, cannot tolerate uh, misuse or jeopardy, jeopard, anybody jeopardizing the food supply. Uh, and, and, and none of us want that. We, we've got generations of being proud to be in agriculture for some uh, handful of two-bit uh, reprobates tolerate uh, muddying up our, our reputations. Uh, we need to make sure that everybody's that word is. Food is a sacred issue in our, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a sacred thing in our society. Use drugs properly. FDA has given us plenty of latitude within the confines of this to use drugs, provided we make sure there are no residues leaving, which uh, involves, in some cases, doing a residue test. It always, it always involves having really good records and reviewing those records before any animal leaves. Uh, never ever let an animal off the operation that's been treated without reviewing what you've written in your red book or written in your, your, your records back at the barn or put in your computer these days. Every animal, every time. My name is Noah Roman Muniz. Um, I'm a veterinarian with the Department of Animal Sciences of CSU. Um, I'm an assistant professor there, and I'm also the extension dairy specialist. There needs to be a valid veterinary client-patient relationship. The veterinarian needs to be um, very familiar with the practices on the dairy, with the diseases that are affecting your cow. Um, he or she should be part of uh, designing protocols for treatment of you know, the, the common diseases. Um, and your veterinarian should be able to um, be contacted at any time that you have a question or, or one of your employees has a question about uh, the proper use of a drug, um, the withdrawal time, and, and that sort of thing. We wanna make sure we know um, when that cow can be sold or when that, even when that cow can be milked because we want uh, our human foods uh, free of antibiotics. Um, for that to happen, we need to have very good record system. Um, we need to know exactly how much you gave the cow, on what date um, you gave that antibiotic to the cow. Um, you need to be able to identify that cow, and, and on dairies you'll see several marks or lead ba leg bands, um, and that tells you that that cow is being treated with an antibiotic. Um, communication on the dairy is crucial. Um, the person getting the cow on the trailer should communicate with the herd manager, for example, and double check that that cow is safe to go. 
So I would say those are very important things. I think as a veterinarian, I think it's necessary for us to treat our, our cattle um, the way they need to be treated, right? So, so if they're sick, we need to promptly treat them correctly. Um, but I'm also passionate, I'm a mom, I, I have a, a daughter and I, I don't wanna be feeding her anything that would be bad for her health, right? So, so I care both about the cows and, and human, and I care about the dairy industry, so I want, I want people uh, to know that we're doing everything possible to uh, protect the well-being of the animals and people. Dee, I've heard you say many times that uh, you know, the foundation of BQA is, is really wound up in total quality management and HACCP. Can you just tell us a little bit about why BQA is the right thing to do? The, the neatest part about once upon a time when somebody said, what's in it for me on BQA? It's about improving production. If we abuse an animal in any fashion, physically, emotionally, nutritionally, environmentally, I don't care how you do it, they take it out of our pocketbook. And we're working on too few dollars. Beef Quality Assurance is a production management system, really, that starts with using the animal husbandry that we were all should have been taught in school, that grandfather built this, these operations because they had a respect for the animals. We build those production systems to allow these animals to be everything God intended them to be. And what quality assurance does is help us catch the little bitty mistakes that cost us money. If we, f we ask everybody in the organization, the vets, the nutritionists, the suppliers, every employee, every member of the family, take a look at what we're doing. Is there anything that could go wrong? Anything we're doing. And if there is, let's figure out a way to avoid it. That's what quality assurance is about, not making any little mistakes that jeopardize these animals' health and well-being, our pocketbook, or food safety. One of the things that BQA means to me is, it, is it's kind of like a, a contract with the people that I'm providing food for. So when I, when I look at BQA, I see BQA as, as equaling consumer trust, or consumer trust to me equals my integrity as, as a rancher, plus my competency in beef quality assurance. You know, how would you explain that to a producer? You may have just hit the biggest nail on the biggest head of all of our discussions. When my father was growing up, 30% of the population in the United States were directly involved in agriculture. When they came to our place to buy milk off the back porch or eggs for my wife, they knew who was taking care of them. It was a personal relationship. Today, 98% or more of the population in the U.S. have no involvement in agriculture. Less than 1% of the people in the U.S. have a relationship with livestock. They don't know who we are. Quality assurance, whether it be cattle or any other quality assurance program, pork, poultry, eggs, milk, it's about giving some confidence to all these people that we're going to do it right. We're going to do it right every time. Letting them understand that these animals are the most important things in our life. It's one of the ways that in, a, in one voice we communicate with the entire world that if it ain't right, we do it right. We'll fix it right. That we care about these animals. Christmas Day, we'll care for these cattle before we open packages. Easter morning, we care for the animals before we go to church. What'd you do the morning your child was born? Yeah, the morning my mother died, my dad and I took care of the cows. It's the responsibility, it's the job we agreed to do in God's world. And quality assurance is a way that we communicate that to the rest of the world. This is who we are. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion about the role of the veterinarian in your beef cattle enterprise. Beef Quality Assurance, a program funded by your checkoff dollars, is designed to improve the overall quality of the products we provide American consumers and consumers worldwide. If you're looking for more information, please go to our website, www.bqa.org 
find additional information and resources that will help you implement a great BQA program. You can learn more about the Beef Checkoff Funded Beef Quality Assurance Program by visiting our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org.